Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to talk to you a little more in depth about our Ethernet devices. <clears throat> We're going to do some more videos on some troubleshooting and some question and answers, but uh, right now I just want to do kind of a little overview of our Ethernet products. Now, we have several Ethernet devices. We have relay controllers, we have aided analog to digital input converters. We have contact closure detectors, as well as a few other things. Now these devices can be used in a multitude of applications. Some of the good things about Ethernet would be it can be accessed over a network, meaning you can control these devices from multiple computers, much like multiple computers would connect to a network printer. You have a bunch of computers on a network, and you also have a printer on the network, and all those computers can print to that uh, printer. Our devices work much that same way. You could control this device from any computer on that network. So that's really handy. Another good thing about Ethernet devices is a lot of times you already have a network interface already set up in your office or your home. So integrating it is fairly easy that way. You can control these devices by creating a virtual COM port on your computer using the real port software. I'll go into that in a minute. So this makes it pretty easy if you have a virtual COM port whenever you open up your software platform like say Visual Basic or Visual Studios for instance it's really easy to send commands out of COM port using those different types of software platforms. So that's really nice. Another good thing is you can control this device over the internet pretty easy. You just need to connect your internet connection directly to the controller and then it can be accessed over the internet. We already have a website set up that can be used to do this. It's called signalswitch.com and you can download a listener and you can control these devices using that website. So that's, that's really handy. So be sure and look into that if you're thinking of something along that lines in the application. So that can be really handy for you. Some cons about this would be you need a little bit of networking experience to control these devices. It's, it's really helpful. If you're new to it, uh, we, we can help you through a lot of things and we can get this up and running for you. As far as really detailed configuration changes, a little networking experience would be really helpful. So. I tell you, if you get our device and you don't have a lot of networking experience, what I would recommend is watch these videos that we're going to post. Also get on our website, go to the resources page. There's an article on there for Ethernet and Wi-Fi devices. Read that article and it will tell you how to set this up step by step. So follow those instructions and get this device set up on your network, get it working. Uh, get comfortable with it and then once you kind of get comfortable with it and you have a good understanding of how it works then you can make some modifications to it. Now one thing you need to know is how IP addresses work okay whenever a device is powered up this device has basically it's, it's basically a small computer and it's going to get on your network and it's going to find an open slot for IP address. It's going to create an IP address and then connect to the network. So one way to find that, that IP address is to download a little software called RealPort. It's available on our website. If you go to the product page for the device that you have, it'll have drivers that you can install and one of them is RealPort. What you'll do is you'll install RealPort on your computer, run the setup, Whenever you do that, you can click on Add or Remove Devices. If you're doing this for the very first time, click Add a Device. When you click Add a Device, if this controller is attached to the network, it should show up. If it doesn't, try pushing the refresh button a couple times until it does. Now, once you find the device, it's going to give you an IP address. Go ahead and write that down, okay? and then you can use that IP address to connect to this device. Another thing I recommend is on the software tab of our website you can download the NCD network component and this has a lot of sample programs that you can load and start using it to connect and turn on and off relays. 
get that up and working, and then go from there. Now, one thing I want to add, if you unplug this device and then you plug it back in, what can happen is this device could assign a new IP address, which is different than the IP address you're talking to. So you may lose communication with the device. Now the way to fix this is to open Realport back up. On that title screen, it says add or remove devices. Click on remove devices and then find the previously uh, IP address that you had. Go ahead and remove that and remove any devices in that window. Remove all of them. Make sure that window is blank. Restart your computer, reinitialize Realport, and click on add device. And then you can re-add this device to your network. Every time this device is powered down, you may have to re-find it. So that can be a little tricky and you need to be comfortable with that. I would recommend, you know, power down the device, power it back up, get familiar with Realport, figure out how to find the IP address using it because it's one of the easiest ways to find that IP address. Once you've got a grasp on that, you're a long ways towards getting these devices working. So, so try that. Now another thing I want to add is we're not necessarily network experts here. What we've done is we've taken our relay controller and we've integrated a Ethernet module from Digi on our controller. So we basically have integrated this system into our relay controller to make it easy for you to do this. But like I said, we're not necessarily expert, experts on networking. Every network is different. And for us to know everything about your network is, it's, it's impossible for us to know everything. So I encourage you to do some research, watch these videos, read our articles, do some reading on how networking works and get a good grasp on that. Maybe you have a friend or a coworker that is an expert in networking. Don't be afraid to consult with them. They'll probably be able to help you out a lot with controlling these devices. I'm, we're, we're going to be more than happy to help you any way that we possibly can in setting this up. We can give you pointers on what to do. We can show you different ways of fixing things. But like I said, a little networking experience goes a long ways. So if you do your studying, you're going to have a lot better grasp on how this works. And you're going to feel a lot more comfortable with the devices. So that's kind of our video for Ethernet. I'll go in more in depth with some technical videos later on in the future. So be sure and watch those if you have more questions. Watch those videos, read the articles, and then if you're still having problems, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. You can call us here at the office at 417-646-5644. We're in the office from 9 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Central Time. You can also reach me by email. My email is travis at controlanything.com. So that's kind of our video here, and I'll look forward to seeing you and more videos that we have posted on our website. Thank you.